Hi, I'm Michelle Heyman. I'm a practice manager for a family support team based in Hastings. I'm also the co-chair for the Ethnic Staff Minority Forum and I'm also a member of the Race Equality Pilot Group. So hello, I'm Alison Jeffrey. I'm the Director of Children's Services for East Sussex County Council. So Alison, some may argue that racism doesn't exist, that it's just poverty. Um, but do you feel racial inequality exists within East Sussex? Yes, I do. I'll come on to the link with poverty. But I think for me, the evidence to say, yes, it's a problem, is both what people tell us, but also we've got the data on things like exclusions from schools that um, black Caribbean children are 8% uh, excluded at least once and, and white children 3% excluded at least once. Uh, Irish travellers 15% excluded at, at least once. Is it the case that a lot of global majority people live in poverty? Yes. Yeah. Is it a case that poverty restricts your life chances? Absolutely but they are two separate issues. And I think it's really important not to get into an argument about which disadvantage, which inequality somehow is more important than, than others. You know, each of them needs to be looked at on their own. Um, and then we also need that intersectionality, which looks at the fact that some people suffer from a number of those different uh, issues. So. I, th I think it absolutely is a problem that we still need to do a lot of work on. So Alison, can you tell me how East Sussex recognises the power imbalances that people from ethnic minority groups may experience? It's a really important question um, and we know from what people have told us how they feel that there is that power imbalance there, definitely. And I think the, the work that you've been involved in, um, the, the forum, the um, Global Majority Staff, Ethnic Minority Staff Forum that, that, that you've been involved in, I'm really encouraged by the, the thinking that's, that's gone on there and the fact that we've been able to make some changes. So looking at new policies for uh, addressing, what, you know, actually knowing what to do when people report discrimination at work. And we're also, I know, looking at what we need to do when colleagues experience racism from families in the course of their work. And these are really important practical things that I think will you know, gradually help us to, to make a difference. Uh, I think the training and awareness raising that we've done, I think it's about 400 plus staff now who've been uh, had awareness training and managers having training in anti-racism. Uh, we've done a deep dive into recruitment, looking at our last couple of social worker recruitment rounds. You know, are we happy that what we're doing, you know, really is free from bias, discrimination, racism? We've also recognised that we need to reframe our guidance to schools about yeah. racial equality because originally that was about uh, resilience for children experiencing racism and. And now it's actually about challenging stereotypes and, cha and being anti-racist. You know, that's much more proactive. There is an absolutely power imbalance there. Uh, and we can see that in the underrepresentation of, of the staff within East Sussex, which I know, you know, there are many things in place that we're trying to kind of redress that balance. So, Alison, can you tell me a bit about how East Sussex is trying to cultivate a culture that values difference um, from people with different backgrounds? It's so important that, and I think we're just at the beginning in a way. Um, for me, I think people know psychological safety is a really important value, um, and I've talked a lot about that. And actually that came from reading the Virtual College report on the urgency of now, because they were really underlining the importance of people feeling they could bring them their whole selves to work and that they were psychologically safe in making the fullest possible contribution. But actually, we need to kind of do more so that we really make the most of what they're bringing to work and, and, and the different perspectives that they have. So, Alison, what, what does being a good ally for race equality mean to you? There's a lot of resources which people can access about this now. Um, you know, I'm not an expert and I use those resources like everybody else. Before 2020, 
I knew it mattered. I said all the right things. I believed all the right things, I thought. But I don't think I really, really thought about it very much. And it was only really in 2020 with the death of George, George Floyd. And I just realised you know, that I needed to do a lot more thinking. And if I was to be a good ally, I needed to understand a lot more. And I think, you know, I realised it was starting with me and being really humble about that and really wanting to listen and, and, and really hear. Obviously, it's not good enough just to say, oh, yeah, I've, I've understood, I've listened, I've heard, right, but what are you actually going to do? You know, what, what is your role? And, and I do think for people like me in the position that I'm in, there's a really heavy responsibility to, to try to act as well as just understand. So I think I agree with a lot of the, the points that you've already made about um, allyship. For me, it does go beyond that listening. It, it is about taking some action and about others showing up for other people speaking up for other people and, and you know not letting either racist comments or microaggressions slide mm -hmm. but actively challenging and supporting yeah. their colleagues. What happens when the the race equality pilot comes to an end and how are children's services going to continue the, the progress and the work that is made in terms of race equality for the staff? Firstly um, we're all really hoping that there'll be a number of sort of products, things that the group has managed to achieve with us, um, changes in policy that we take back to the equalities board that's being set up corporately for East Sussex, so that there's um, a legacy of the work in terms of tangible things that people can point to. But I also think, you know, two years um, is absolutely nothing in addressing centuries of discrimination. Uh, and so we can't really just stop the work. It's not a sort of one-off, a task and finish job, isn't it? Tackling racism. It's a commitment, a sort of lifelong commitment absolutely. that everybody needs. Yeah. I think it's really important that this work continues. And like you say, it doesn't just stop because the pilot has stopped. Those involved really want to, to be part of that and, and see that continue. I would really like to see the Ethnic Staff Forum really, you know, get off the ground and really be developed and be well attended on a, on a regular basis. And I think that that's a really important space for staff to kind of go and, and gain support. But we also need to have um, an increase in that kind of allyship. Mm -hmm. So whether there is a, a whole staff forum where we, we can look at that mm -hmm. in developing the allyship, mm -hmm. Um, but I, I do think there's a place for, for all of those things and I would like to be part of all of those moving forward and really hope that the department will continue to support those projects continuing. Definitely we will. Thank you. Thank you.